YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy D. Dyson. Ahsoka, episode one and two. My gosh, Star Wars is back. It is back. I feel like it fell off from the Book of Boba. Um, the last season of Mandalorian was not saying lackluster, but mediocre in a sense where it's more of a universe building at this point. And I think that it was because they're pouring all their energy into Ahsoka. Bravo. Dave F Filoni, like, Fioni, Filoni, first episode, mwah. That's going to, I feel like with the drum pattern that they had with Mandalorian to be like, this is something special. They had a, a drum pattern here to be like, this is also something special. And... The way the credits, like how the opening credits was rolling up, I said, oh, we're in for a treat. This is really Star Wars lore in all of its glory. And I'm happy that we're in an age of people really watching Star Wars now. Like I said, like a huge fan like myself, been Star Wars, Star Wars since the fourth grade. You know what I'm saying? And just to see, you know, lightsaber battling, Trying to figure out who's doing what. A uh, huge rest in peace to Ray Stevenson, um, who's who's like the like the older general, like great Jedi. Um, came in kind of like in a Darth Vader setting, but more of I felt like his the way he killed was more reserved. Like he still had a a, a light to him, but he's still doing. It. Hence of why he has an orange lightsaber. Like he's not fully dark. He's not to the dark side and he's not light either. He's just in the middle with my own beliefs. But I was a he was a former Jedi. So Balin uh Skull is is basically a former Jedi, and you could tell he knew who Anakin Skywalker was. So he probably was a teen or you know, still a Padawan at that time, but was escaped from when Anakin turned over to Darth Vader. So he has a, a vision of light and dark and probably followed behind Darth Vader more than anything because he was just such a ruling menace at that point. But And you could tell even with his Padawan, she still keeps that braid. So he's he adopts both sides of uh, trying to understand what a gray Jedi is and basically a murder for hire type of mercenary Jedi. And they rescue Morgan uh, Espley who got captured in the Mandalorian by Ahsoka. We saw that that famous Ahsoka battle when we got to see Ahsoka in the Mandalorian season two, um, how they came and rescued her off of the New Republic ship, only because she knows the location of, of Admiral Thrawn. And Ahsoka's battle is to find the map for it. So we got to just see Star Wars Jedi mission, like it's nothing short of Jedi Survivor, uh, Fallen Order, like it just it's nothing of just playing a video game and just and it made it so Star Wars is way better than Obi Wan. Um, the cinematography in it felt like Star Wars. The story, the look of it, everything it felt like Star Wars, and we got two episodes to make it feel like it's a movie. I was like, oh my God, two hours, hour and 45 minutes of just Star Wars. And I'm like, how many episodes you got? Six or eight? I'm like, yeah, this is definitely, definitely 10 out of 10 for both episodes. We got Sabine Wren. You could tell if you are a real true fan of Star Wars Rebels, it's just a continuation of Star Wars Rebels. Um... I didn't watch it. Like I said, I got cut off at probably like the second season, third season of Clone Wars. So I couldn't get into Rebels because I was really enthralled with Clone Wars and then my kids and they didn't want to watch that type of um, animation. So we started watching something else. So I, I fell off of it. But Rebels, you could tell it's just a continuation with Ezra, uh, the general. And it was, I remember that team. It was always like the team of Ahsoka and her little team. And Sabrine, uh, Sabine Wren was her, her apprentice or Padawan. So I like how you just pick up from where it was in Rebels because Ezra, quote unquote, uh, 
I'm not sure what happened. I think he, he died in the battle to try to kill Thrawn. So I'm thinking that he may be alive. He may not be. Um, but that leaves a lot of room for interpretation of Rebels and how they're going to build the Mandoverse and Star Wars. And I feel like with this season, if not this season of Ahsoka, next season, we're getting Cal Kestis. As we find out that Morgan Espley is a second sister of Dathomir. And if you guys played Star Wars Survivor and, and Fallen Order, we know where we, you know, from with Mira, who's a second sister of Dathomir with that witchcraft and how they use their powers. It's it's based on their their being. Kind of like how a Jedi will use the force, they use their their will and their and their power. So I'm seeing all of it canon. I love it. I freaking love it like couldn't take my eyes, my eyes off the screen and just really enthralled with how the direction of, of Dave Fion, like he's really like we're going to make sure we have a quality product we're not messing with, with you know with Marvel and what they're doing I would, I would love for Lucas Films to get out of under the Disney umbrella because it can be a little bit more um not saying graphic, but more Star Wars-esque, like Han shot first, that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can get back to the the brutal, I guess, I'm like, if you're going to go into a, a lightsaber battle, limbs is getting cut off. You know what I'm saying? Obi-Wan sliced a man's hand, uh, like a, a monster's hand off in New Hope. Like, things are getting cut off, you use that lightsaber. That's where I wanted to get and how I want it, but... I love how they blended a whole bunch of like an inquisitor, like with the like the droids and how they use it, and I just really I really liked it because of the story of just how an apprentice is, how stern Ahsoka is, learning from Anakin, turning into Darth Vader, so she still has those same principles. She still has that demeanor like Anakin, like like no, you know you've done enough kind of like put you down but I'm, I'm disappointed but I, I can only say a few words and it was just all of that drawing into like you just seen how Ahsoka really became that Rebels Ahsoka. Rosario Dawson is doing a phenomenal job. Um, I would love to see a girl who, who voiced Ahsoka Katano uh, in here somewhere. I think she might be the general. I'm not too sure. I have to check on that but I still love this nevertheless. So, you guys enjoyed my review of episode one and two of Ahsoka on Disney Plus streaming right now. I cannot wait for week by week to really get full Star Wars because we're back in it. So, subscribe to my channel, post a comment down below, and like the video. It's your boy, D-Dice. Peace.